Hey, UConn Nation, it's KK Arnold here. If you're looking for the latest UConn women's basketball content, go subscribe to Listen Up to Phil and Ryan. Go Huskies. Welcome back to Listen Up, Phil and Ryan. Back at it again. Uh, this is actually a pre-recorded episode, so this should be going out Monday morning. Uh, I'm actually going to be away again, so I actually won't be here where I am right now, but we figured we'd pre-record so we don't have to take a whole week off so you guys should be seeing this on monday and hopefully after this video and a couple days later we hope to get one of the interviews out but we'll have to see uh still trying to to edit the interviews and get those all sorted out so looking forward to hopefully getting one of those out next week as well uh, but for today's topic uh going off of another article but we saw some headlines about Paige becker's uh, making some headlines during the all season and not not on the basketball court, but off of it um, during the all season, getting, of course, NIL deals, making fashion statements with new outfits. But most recently, the Yukon Huskies partnered with Madison Reed, which is a hair care company that sells hair care products. And in light of the partnership, Paige decided to dye her hair pink, which has made some headlines recently. So Paige has actually been dyeing her hair blonde ever since a teen I was reading and now has switched to pink for the time being. Beckers will also be a partner and brand ambassador for uh, Madison Reed, which is actually formerly founded by UConn alumni Amy Arrett, which is, is pretty cool. Uh, so Beckers stated, quote, Madison Reed is a company whose values align with mine. And I'm proud to get behind their mission of empowering and creating opportunities for women. So love to hear that. And I love the page that used her huge following as a positive and, and does a lot of stuff off the court as well. She also says she wants to try something different with her new hair color and believes that, quote, you can be a killer on the court and also have your nails and hair done. And like I said, I, I love that Paige is spreading positive message and expanding her brand and name outside of basketball. And, and hopefully that inspires the younger athletes, the younger generation that look up to her to, to do the same as well. All right. So I love this, Ryan, from the New York Post. Uh, it says, just call her Pink Paige Beckers. So, Ryan, I guess every time now, like, this is just, like, obviously a fun, fun episode on this, we'll call it pre-recorded Monday. You're right. Have a great time in the Music City. Now, you won't be right in Nashville, but you'll be pretty close. Um, And be safe, and we will see you uh, when you get back in about a week. But anyway, yeah, I uh, thought we would just have a little bit of fun with this one. It, you know... So get ready for Phil every time now for last check-ins this season, game recaps. I'm always, hopefully, a lot, a lot, a lot of game recaps. I'll be saying, Ryan, how about the performance by Pink Page? Pink who? <laughs> Pink Page. Um, you know, I'm looking at this now, Ryan, and isn't it crazy? Like, what's your number one takeaway or what's your reaction? I can't wait to see your face. I scroll on down and the article goes the Yukon senior guard. Okay, first of all, Ryan, it's just like four years ago, what five years ago, we saw her step up onto the court for one of the first times ever, make that great shot against South Carolina at that time. Uh, ESPN notification on our phone, right? And all the above. And rest is history. Here we are sitting here now. Uh, yeah. Big reason. Big reason. Thank you, Paige Beckers. Big, big reason. Sailor Poffenbarger, we have to shout out to her too. But big reason why Ryan and I, Ryan and I are sitting here today is because of all of you. Let's not make a mistake. All of you that come through and watch us. But who inspired us, Ryan? You had to tell me who inspired us, not only a senior guard, but now who is projected to be the number one pick in the 25 WNBA draft. Like, Ryan, it just seems like I woke up and – it seems like it was yesterday where I was telling you, Ryan, maybe we should focus on UConn women's basketball. And, and wow, just wow. Yeah, the, the rest is history, really. It, it does seem like it was just yesterday that 
time's really flown by now that we've been covering UConn. It's hard to believe that I, I guess this is our, entering our third season now covering the UConn women's basketball team. So it kind of is hard to believe. But yeah, just seems like yesterday, too, the page was a freshman lighting the world on fire. UConn making it to the championship game. And of course, Paige winning National Player of the Year and uh, Rookie of the Year and, and all of those awards. And it's had a, a pretty amazing career. Unfortunately, you know, out the, out a whole year because of that injury, but bounced back last year and put on a, another show for us pretty much the whole entire year. So obviously, like we said, during the all season, a lot expecting big things out of Paige this season. Uh, but yeah, it's it's all gone by way too fast. But just uh, just ready to soak up Paige's last year here at UConn. So it's three different pictures, I believe, maybe four, uh, two hundred some thousand likes, Ryan. All right, on her Instagram post, and again, it says blessed to partner with at Madison Reed. So Paige is blessed to have. Uh, them or her rather and then we're blessed to have Paige Beckers in UConn for sure and everybody knows that not just you and I uh right your impression your first impression of Paige did it look there I think it I think it, lo it looks good her hair looks good but I kind of I told you today oh man Ryan it's nothing like you know I, I think it's the way to me it's like this with everybody like my first impression of anybody I meet uh, it's like, you know, they, they, whatever their hair color is, however I originally see them now change is fine. I get it, but I want to know how you feel and everybody else who so comment away on this video. I, I just kind of missed the blonde hair. Cause that's just the original style. You know what I mean? Now, if I would have seen Paige come on the big stage when she got to UConn and had pink hair already, I might've liked it better, but I, I missed the original take. Yeah, it's it's definitely a little different for sure. Like like Paige said herself, she wants to try something different. Uh, you know, I I don't really dislike it a whole lot. I, I think it looks pretty good. Uh, I think it, it is definitely a little weird. She won't when get somebody... she won't get mad at you. I promise. <laughs> Just really tell us how you feel. <laughs> no, I mean it, it is kind of weird when somebody does get a whole yeah. new hair color. But I, I never really actually knew it until I read it today that Paige isn't a natural blonde and she's been dying her hair blonde all this time uh, oh. ever since she was a teen. So that, that is kind of a weird as well. Uh, okay. So technically not, not her actual hair color. It was blonde. Uh, like, so yeah, I mean, it's a little different. Uh, I think it looks pretty good, uh, but it definitely will be a little weird, especially as she goes into the season with pink hair out there on the court. And maybe, maybe that'll give her some, uh, special powers that she doesn't already have out there or on the court and give her an extra extra energy boost. All right, comment time. Brian, I have to deeply apologize to Jason. I somehow, now we're not supposed to have favorites, right? But one of my favorites, Jason D'Amico on this podcast, um, I somehow missed his comment on the last video uh, that we did. Uh, so I'm going to read the comment from not the last one, but the last video. And then I'll get into some comments from the last video, if that makes sense. So Jason said, Ryan, oh, how do I respond to this video and not write a novel? Aaliyah, in my opinion, the biggest loss is Aaliyah Edwards. It would be very hard for the upcoming freshman to immediately produce that output that she supplied game in and game out. There is going to be a learning curve that us fans are just going to have to be patient with. Nika, as great as Nika was, you can replace her with scores. Yes, we will lose a leadership and defense at first, but having reliable mid-range and three-point shooters would do wonders for this team. From a technical and personal perspective, this can be viewed as a rebuilding year with one exception. We can win it all if Paige, Pink Paige, Ryan, plays selfishly. To win a championship this year, she can't afford to be both coach and player with a side order of cheerleader. She needs to be primarily uh, primal and take over this league. I thought he meant primarily take over this league. Uh, like we all know she can, that is how we win. 
it's time for the rest of this team to grow up and start pulling their weight. Peace, fellas. Yeah, it's pretty well said. I, I think for Paige, we've talked about it before, how Gino said he wants her to be more selfish at points in the game. And like we just said on, on the last episode, that it's not really her game. She's more of a team first kind of player, wants to always set up set up her teammates, excuse me. But mm -hmm. I, I think, you know, at, at some points in the game, she does kind of have to go into that takeover mode. Uh, and really just show off her skills and show us why she is one of the best players in the nation. But uh, we'll just have to see how the season goes. I definitely expect her to really pop off in some of these games during the season and have that 30 to 40 point performance at some points. But yeah, I mean, losing Aaliyah is definitely going to be tough. Definitely not a, an easy player to replace. But like I said, some of the bigs have to step, step up. And not only the freshmen stepping up, but also, like Jason said, some of the leaders on this team, some of the seniors have to step up and, and lead as well. All right, now comments from the last video. UConn Huskies could be dangerous landing these recruits. Ryan Just Me came through and said, I'm always glad to get a new update from Listen Up. Great info. Phil and Rye, thanks for reading my comment. That was a pleasant surprise and the kind of thing that doesn't happen very often. You two guys are keeping the UConn enthusiasm on a high level. Thank you. Well, there you go. Read your comment, very first one on this last video. But Ryan, you know, we discussed that a long time ago, and I, I'm guilty of it. I, I'll tell them I was going to eliminate all comments uh, as far as reading comments just our trademark, right? Reading comments, maybe some other podcasters do it. I don't know, but I talked to you about eliminating all comments at the end of, of these videos. And I am damn glad that we did not do that. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's pretty special. I think, you know, that that's what makes us pretty unique is the, the bond we share with, with all of you and the viewers. So I, I like I said, the, the comments are always my favorite part of the episode where we get to read it, you know, can't, can't read all of them, unfortunately, because it would be on here 30, 40 minutes every time. But we do <laughs> love to to see all the comments and to respond to as many as we can. I think it, it's you know pretty fun for us, and hopefully it's just as fun for you guys as well. Jason, I won't forget you this time. Here we go, Ryan. He already came through, right? Pre-recorded episode. We should be cautious while diving into the subject of height. Gino prefers bigs who can run a quick transition offense. In my opinion, it is one of the big reasons Amari DeBerry never really got a foothold at UConn. She was traditional, tall, and methodical. Aaliyah Edwards was not the tallest, but she could move across the hardwood like a wrath about to steal your soul. Whoever comes to UConn, they better be ready to push the envelope for 40 minutes. That is certain peace. You know, I'm glad he brought that up because, again, I keep telling myself, and as hard as I hammered into my head, Ryan, height doesn't really matter all that much. And I'm glad where Jason kind of criticized my opening remarks on that last video. I love it. It, it. it is a really good point, and I think that goes back to just Gino and this UConn team really wanting to get the right player into the system. And I think that's why – UConn recruits so well and gets the the right players uh, in the transfer portal or you know br bringing recruits in from high school they need to find the, the right players and I think that's why a lot of times they don't go after all the top players in the transfer portal all the big names they need to find the the right fit the, the perfect fit for the kind of system that, that they run at, at UConn and I think that's why we we saw Caitlin Chin uh, come to UConn during the off season. Uh, so, I, you know, I'm not sure if some Fi would be that that perfect fit. The, the more I think about it, uh, can she run the floor? Uh, maybe not as good as a uh, got McKeer can, but we'll just have to see what happens. But I think that pr is pretty important part of, of UConn system is, you know, getting out in transition, making sure back on defense. I think UConn plays at a pretty high pace. Uh, shout out to the disruptive one. He was the very first one to comment on this video. And Ryan, he said, 
Jazzy is my top choice for 2025. She is a transformative player and would be the perfect star to lead us into the post Paige Becker's era. I like Makir also. She is Canadian. I want UConn to keep the Canadian pipeline healthy, and I think Makir would be a solid addition. She is a shot maker. That's what she really brings on the court. Yeah, it's hard to believe, too, how many players that UConn gets outside of the U.S. and how we can bring all this talent from all these other countries and have it on the same team. So it is pretty good to see that as well. And it would be nice, like I said, to get another player from Canada on this team uh, and, and another player from a, you know, a player from Australia would be pretty cool, too. So we'll just have to see what happens. But like I said, definitely something to, to keep an eye on throughout the season. All right. One more. This is, <laughs> I'm trying to hold back my laugh here because this is I don't know. I've never seen Ryan get very fired up. But hey, it's pretty late at nighttime, Ryan. So I'm not going to uh, I'm going to try to let you at least get a little bit of sleep in before this big trip uh sc bread said i don't care how many top rank recruits uconn gets y'all are through for women's basketball for some time mm. it's, a, it's a pretty hot take we we don't get a lot of hot takes Ooh. on this podcast but uh you know it, it, everybody's uh entitled to their own opinion but uh, I think, you know, I, th I think UConn will be around for a while, especially since we got Gino Log for five more years. So I, I think we're good for at least another five years, uh, you know, e even though Paige is leaving after this season. It's a good thing about UConn. We always get these players to come in uh, that can step up after the great players leave, and we have more great players to, to replace them and step up into their place so you know i i think uconn is is pretty good for for a while all right how about this ryan to improve is to change to be perfect is to change often i don't think Paige beckers has to change often to pretty much be almost perfect no one is but ryan maybe that pink hair will do us and this whole uconn family some some really really good because let me tell you maybe maybe we'll be seeing pink in our sleep when it comes to march madness phil and rye on listen up 